start now with the map and today um, I'm going to talk about complex motion per equation with prescribed singularities and this is a joint work with uh, my dear collaborators Tamas Darvas and Chin Lu that is here in the audience. Okay so um, since it's Thursday morning, I'm gonna start uh, slowly with the setting where I'm gonna work. So I'm gonna work in a compact Keller manifold, then I'm gonna deal with X. So X is a compact Keller manifold of complex dimension N, I'm gonna write it here, there, and uh, the little omega is denotes the Keller form or the Keller matrix, Keller form that is a one-one form that is closed, declosed, real, is strictly positive. So what does it mean? It means, let me write it in uh, local coordinates because I'm gonna need it for the, for the following. And in local coordinates, I can write this as the imaginary unit, the sum, times the sum over alpha and beta of g alpha beta bar d zeta alpha wedge d zeta beta bar, where here the entries, the coefficient g alpha beta bar are the entries of an emission matrix. Hmm? So this is an emission, let me write it again, emission n times n emission matrix. matrix. Okay, perfect. So we already saw the story in color geometry, the problem in color geometry of looking for special or canonical metrics. And among that, among them, we already saw that special ones, special metrics are the so-called Keller Einstein metrics. Hmm? Keller Einstein metrics. Once again, what is a Keller Einstein metric? Well, we are gonna say that a Keller form, let me call it omega tilde, also another one from the one that I picked at the beginning, omega tilde, that a Keller form, a Keller form omega tilde, in the same cohomology class of omega, let's say, is, Keller Einstein, so that I'm gonna denote by Ki for short, if and only if there exists a lambda, a real number, such that the Ricci form of omega tilde is lambda times, is a multiple of the metric we start with. Hmm? And this is our Keller Einstein question. This is, I don't know, 10th time we saw that. Let me also remind you that the Ricci form here, let's say uh, omega tilde, locally write as a coefficient, normalization coefficient, times the sum, again over alpha and beta bar, the beta of the second derivative over z zeta alpha d zeta bar of the following function. So the log of the determinant of the emission matrix, let's say PQ tilde associated with omega tilde here. And then I need the Ricci to be a one more form, so here I'm gonna add d zeta alpha wedge d zeta beta bar. Hmm? So, from these two local expressions, we can see that the keller einstein equation, again, is a, an identity between forms, differential form, one-one forms. But the magic of the, ah, no, I cannot do that. Uh, let me do that. Hmm. 
a little bit of suspense. <laughs> but now the magic of the, of the Keller world is that such an equation, that as I say, it is an equation for forms, so the keller einstein equation is equivalent to a, a, a partial differential equation for a, a scalar partial differential equation. So for a, uh, for a potential PD, for a potential, that is called a complex Mont-Jamper equation. The per equation of the following type. So what I have is omega plus i d d bar phi. So this is the potential you are looking for to the power n, where n again is the dimension equal to exponential of minus lambda phi, where lambda is the same lambda up there, times f omega n, hmm? where here f is a strictly positive function and smooth. So real valued smooth function on x. Huh? Let me put it in a square and let me call it again. So this is gonna be my motion pair. So M A and then I'm gonna put a lambda just because I have this is a, a family of uh, a family of equation depending on, on the parameter. Let me also uh, observe that when lambda is equal to zero, here f has to satisfy a compatibility, a compatibility condition. So f has to be such that the integral over x of omega n, so the volume of, uh, of x, has to be equal to the integral over x of f omega n. Hmm? Just because by Stokes, the total mass of this guy has to be equal to, um, to omega n. Hmm? So I'm going to refer to this by the compatibility condition. Hmm? So now the question is, if I want to look for a keller einstein metric, actually I, I, I need to solve, the question is, can I solve such an equation? And if I can, can solve it, what can I say about the regularity of the, uh, the solution? Hmm? So see, as I said, we have uh, a family of equations depending on lambda, but actually it depends just on the sign of lambda. So we have three cases. So three cases, and the other case, lambda, uh, lambda positive, lambda equal to zero, and lambda negative. Hmm? And this corresponds to what we already saw. So this is the case C1 of x positive, the first chain class uh, definite positive, the first chain class equal to zero, and the first chain class negative. Of x negative. Hmm? So today we are gonna focus just on these two cases. So this is today. Now, what can we say about this? Well, in uh, in these two cases, I'm gonna recall you the famous Calabi-Yau theorem. So let me. Uh, I'm gonna put it. What's this? This is two. This is going to be super up. <coughs> up, up, up. And this is going to be no, no, yes. Okay, so as I was saying, let me recall you the, uh, the Yao and the Yang theorem in these two cases. So theorem, and then this is due to Yao in the lambda equal to zero case, and then to obey Yao in the lambda 
in the negative case. And the theorem states as following, namely, is, it, it ensures that there exists a unique solution phi, so a, a unique function, smooth function on x, that is solution of my complex motion per equation, where here, when I talk about uniqueness in the lambda equal to zero case, I need to normalize my solution because my solution plus a constant is gonna still be, is gonna be again a solution, so I'm gonna normalize phi with sup equal to zero hmm? to have uniqueness. Okay, so equivalently, this, uh, this theorem is gonna tell me, so equivalently, It's going to tell me when, when the, if the first chain class is zero, I can find a, there exists a canonized sum metric. So it, let's say it, there exists a Ricci flat metric, a smooth one, a genuine one, uh, in each cohomology class, in each uh, cohomology. Class, let's say, denoted by omega. Hmm? And in the case when the fortune class is negative, it's telling me that there exists a Keller Einstein metric hmm? uh, in the cohomology class. Cohomology class of minus the first chain class of x. Hmm? Because since this was negative, minus the first chain class of x is a, is a genuine, is a Keller class. Okay, so what are the methods to, to try and, and, and prove the, this theorem? So there are basically three methods. Uh, the first one is the continuity method. Method, and this is the the, the method used by Yao, Eumen Yao. Hmm? Then there is the viscosity approach, viscosity approach, and then there is the variational approach. So we already heard the these words during the week, and. So, but, but I mean, what are the, why should we, why the viscosity approach or the variational approach should be better with respect to the continuity method or why not? Well, the point while these, these methods were developed in the, in the last years is because one would like to, to solve a more general family of complex motion per equation. Namely, we would like to solve complex motion per equation. Let me write this for C, for complex, and my equation of type theta plus i to the bar of phi to the power n equal to mu. Where here, this theta is not necessarily a Keller form hmm, up there. Not necessarily Keller. And this measure mu, uh, this mu is not necessarily um, um, is not necessarily a volume form. Hmm? So it's not absolutely continuous with respect to the back. Any probability measure, positive measure, just a positive measure. Okay, but now uh, the first question uh, raises. So, if theta is not uh, is not Keller and phi is not smooth, how can we hope to define such a guy? What does it mean doing the the wedge product of something that is not a differential form? Hmm? So now I'm gonna try to answer to this question, maybe there, since I'm 
Cross Bites. So the first question, the question is how to define and what does it mean the motion per measure of something of a potential that is not smooth. Hmm? If theta not Keller and final smooth. So this is the question. To, to answer to such a question, I need to, de to define some tools in uh, pluripotential theory. I hope that you just you know, got, that get scared by the word and uh, run away. So pluri and pluri potential theory. Huh? Yes. So I just to understand the nature of the question. Yeah. What suppose phi is smooth? Yeah. What's the but, problem with defining this? Uh, first of all, you you need this. I mean, the, if theta is not color, yeah. you are not gonna find uh, such a guy smooth such that this is gonna be positive. So you want to define a positive measure. The motion per measure is a positive measure a priori. So um, first of all, I need to 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 define what I'm what I want to put inside. So this is going to be, in my case there, I was looking for omega plus IDD bar of phi such that omega IDD bar of phi was a Keller form. So yes, some positivity. It was a positive uh, differential form. But it's the Keller condition that just means it's closed. The color condition means that the omega is closed, but when I look at the equation, so the, when I look at the equation motion pair of lambda, then I found for a solution phi, but then the color Einstein, the omega tilde that is gonna solve the Ricci equation, the chi equation over there, is gonna be omega plus i to the bar of phi. So in particular, I want that guy well, okay. to be a color form. So the, the Ricci curvature is not this unless it's, a, it's closed. But is that what you're saying, or are you saying? Because I don't. Is it really? Is it obvious that if theta is not closed, then this will never? Be sorry, sorry. Theta, theta is not color, but it still is. So I, I just, I'm actually, sorry. Theta, theta is still, maybe well, I should say, theta, I'm going to be more precise in a minute, but theta, I'm still taking it as a 1-1 a one -one form that is closed, so it defines a cohomology class, but not necessarily strictly positive. The, sorry, I should, uh, but no, so this is what I mean by not Keller, in, actually, but no, I'm going to be more precise in a minute, not necessarily strictly positive. Thanks, sorry. City positive. This is important because otherwise, there is no. So you can think of this. I mean, for, for what I'm gonna do, you can allow semi positive, but you can also undo, uh, allow something that is uh, negative somewhere, zero somewhere, and positive somewhere else. Mm? As far as one condition is satisfied, but I'm gonna give you that later. Hmm? It's gonna come up. So, uh, how do I start? I, I say that I want you to define something in pluripotential theory. And pluripotential theory actually studies the so called uh, theta plurisubharmonic function. Hmm? So, theta is gonna be now my, my differential form that I fixed. Pluri subharmonic functions. And then, I mean, just because I don't want to lose you, if you are more familiar with the, the, the Keller form, you can still think at theta to be a Keller form, hmm? if you want. So. What are these theta plurisubharmonic functions? So let me maybe, if you want, think 
still a, a, a theta to be Keller, eh? just to, uh, to follow, <laughs> to be Keller. Mm -hmm. So what is pluri subharmonic function? I say that phi is uh, a theta pluri subharmonic function, and I'm going to denote it like this for short, if phi locally writes as a smooth function plus a pluri subharmonic one. Mm -hmm. So it means that actually all the nice properties of pluri subharmonic function uh, are uh, the phi has all the nice property of pluri subharmonic function. Plus, I need a global condition. Hmm? So, and the global condition is that I ask that theta plus i d d bar of phi is a positive guy. So I ask this to be a positive in the weak sense of currents. So let me say weak and then sense of currents. So what is already the, the novelty there is that here phi need just to be uh, an, an L1 function uh, over x and a priori it can have also singularities and manus infinity. Let me write it down. Okay. So here it is, over here. So let me just remark. Hmm? So a, a theta pluri subharmonic function, so a theta pluri subharmonic function is, uh, it turns out to be upper semi continuous, upper semi continuous. So this is the picture you should have in mind. And then I take this point. Hmm? So let's do like this. And hence, it is bounded from above, because the manifold is compact, it's bounded from above. But it can have logarithmic, at worst, logarithmic, logarithmic, singularities at minus infinity. Okay, now the point is that for uh, such a function, for uh, so that, that, that they, they satisfy the uh, weak positivity condition, namely the theta plus i d d bar of phi is um, is positive somehow, then uh, so for theta PSH functions, uh, Berman, Buxom, Gage in 2010 for such a function defined the so called non pluripolar measure. Hmm? So they define. the so-called <laughs> non-pluripolar measure of phi. So let me underline this. And that by man, so usually in, in the literature, you can find such a guy, such non-pluripolar measure, it's gonna be a positive measure. As, uh, so bracket theta plus i d d bar of phi to the power n, and again another bracket. Now, because I'm gonna use this a lot, I'm gonna then like, just for short notation, I'm gonna denote it as theta phi to the power n. Hmm? So this is just a notation to keep along with with that. 
Why it is also there are two two future of this guy that are important to underline. The first thing is that I, I don't want to define what this guy is today. You just you should keep in mind that there is a way to define it, and just by construction, it turns out that such a measure does not charge pluripolar set. So this guy, it's called no pluripolar measure because it does not does not charge pluripolar pluripolar sets. So maybe this word is new for you. What does it mean to be pluripolar? Since I'm going to use it also later, let me give you a, a quick definition. We say that the set in X is pluripolar, P for pluripolar, if is pluripolar, if P is contained in the minus infinity locus of some theta plurisubharmonic function. Hmm? So this is uh, for, uh, there exists a phi, a psi, theta PSH, such that <coughs> P is contained in the minus infinity locus of, uh, of such a guy. Hmm? In particular, we can see that such a measure that does not see, does not charge, does not put mass on such a set. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Of course, but theta, theta also has to be theta in that case is going to be a, a color form. So if there exists a smooth representant such that omega plus i dd by dd bar of phi is positive, then the, the cohomology class is going to be Keller. Hmm? Because the, the, the cohomology class being Keller, it means that there exists a representative that is a Keller form. Yes, but then, yes, but then, if there exists uh, such a guy, has to be, uh, has to be no, no, just semi-positive. Yes, yes, but yes, in that case, it's still he is the the word. And then yes, in the in the Keller case, uh, when phi is smooth, you do the wedge product at n times of differential form, and then you get the same guy. Yes. I mean, this is one definition of, 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 of define what does it mean doing the n, the, the wedge product n times of currents. There are several uh, definitions in the literature. This is one of them. Uh, this 2010 word for very general classes. Sure, but if the feature is actually generally Yes. This is a, a, a work of uh, Gesenzeri in 2007. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, another, I told you that I, I wanted to underline two properties of such a guy or such a measure. The first one is that by construction is a positive measure that does not charge pluripolar set. The second one is that if I take any theta pluripolar function, and then I, I look at his uh, non-pluripolar motion per measure, its mass is always less or equal than the total volume of theta. So this quantity, you can think of this, in, in the Keller case, this is going to be exactly the volume uh, of x, hmm? when theta is Keller. Okay, so what else? Let me go. Yeah, so now I define what um, what this guy is, and what I'm gonna what I'm gonna give you today is actually uh, the existence and uniqueness of singular Keller Einstein matrix with prescribed singularities. Hmm? Well, of course, now 
the what does it mean singular means the the potential are living in this set of theta pluri subharmonic functions let me let me write it down so today um, existence and uniqueness of singular Say in particular, singular matrix, hmm? singular matrix with prescribed singularities. Where here, what do I mean by prescribed singularities? I mean that I I chose one potential singular the singularity that I want to see and then I solve a complex motion pair equation hoping that the solution is gonna look like the potential that I chose at the beginning hmm? so this is the idea but so where where should I pick these uh, prescribed singularities so I'm gonna define, before stating the main theorem, I'm gonna define a set. So before the, way, the main theorem, you should be really a little bit more patient before the main theorem. I'm gonna define a subset of theta pluri subharmonic function, and this subset I'm gonna call it M, you're gonna see why. And this is gonna be the set of all the, let's say, capital phi that are, the, that are theta pluri subharmonic functions mm, with total mass strictly positive, not necessarily equal to the volume, but just strictly mm. positive, and such that and it, this function has to be maximal. So the M here stands for positive mass and maximal. What do I mean by maximal? Well, now this can be like a little bit technical, but I would like to give you a, a rough idea. So maximal means that if so let's say let also also normalize all the potential to be negative. Mm? I can always do that because I say that uh, theta pluri subharmonic functions are bounded from above. So up to translate by constant, I can normalize them to be to be negative. So maximal means that if I have uh, inequality of the type phi less or equal than u less or equal than zero, and u again. Uh, a theta pluri subharmonic function with the same mass of phi, you know, n, then phi has to be, u has to be equal to phi. This means this means, uh, if you want, naively, that phi is the least singular potential in the class of all theta pluri subharmonic function having fixed mass. Sorry. Uh, no, I cannot do that. Hmm? So I'm fixing the mass, I'm, a look, I'm a looking to all potential with this fixed mass, and with uh, less singular than phi, but then what I'm saying be maximal means that there, there are no uh, less, less singular potential in this class. Phi has to be the least singular one. Hmm? Maybe since this can be like a new uh, notion, let me, let me give you, I mean, maybe a little bit more information. Hmm? Let me write it down what I just said. Again, uh, what does it mean be maximal? So be maximal again means, I'm just writing what I say, it means that if we look at all the set of theta blue subharmonic functions, hmm, so negative, 
that are less singular than phi, and with the same mass, we look at the set and then we try to maximize it. So we look at the soup. So we can, in general, we can ensure that not only such a soup exists, so it means that the maximal element into the set exists, but in some special cases, we can also, uh, we can also ensure that this, this soup is phi, is precisely equal to phi. And this means that phi is the least singular function uh, satisfying this mass condition. Hmm? Uh, yes. Yeah, maybe this can be a little bit uh, new, but let's go it slowly. Let me also give you um, an example of such a guy. So, if either if you don't understand, I mean, if you are not comfortable with the definition, you can keep in mind the example and go ahead for the rest of the talk with such an example. So, an example of potential in M, of potentials in M, in M are potential with analytic singularities. So, potentials with analytic singularities. And what does it mean? Let me write it down again. So, it means that locally, phi can be written as the, the log of the sum over j of the norm square of some holomorphic function, the phi j, plus a, a smooth one. Hmm? We saw that, I guess, in uh, Zacharias' talk uh, yesterday. Hmm? So, potential of this type are in particular um, in M. Hmm? So, if you want, you can just keep this, this kind of phi for, for the rest of the following. Let me do that. Say it again. I start with I can I can I can start with any uh, I can start with uh, phi is the thing that I start with. No, u is the, I'm doing the soup over all, 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 over all u that satisfies such, such a thing. So phi is fixed. But do you really want u to be at least? Yeah, it's, it's less singular than, than phi, yes. Phi is the, is the least, so, okay, let, let's, just, let's just look at this. We take the set, of all the theta blue isobarmonic functions that are least singular than phi, but with the same mass. We can look at that. And then I'm asking, I, I take in the soup, and that's what I'm asking if a maximal M element exists. So the answer is yes, so there exists a maximal element. Let me call it, if you want. C of, 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 of uh, phi a priori, and such a phi of, uh, uh, C of phi is going to be less ling singular than phi, is going to be still theta PSH, and is going to be still, is going to have still the same mass. So it's an element inside, it's a maximum. And it's going to be such that the integral of uh, the, the total mass of this guy is equal to this guy. And then the maximal condition means that I, am, I want that phi is equal to C phi. This is the maximal condition. Hmm? 
Yeah, no, you is not negative. I, I, I take like, uh, everything is not negative. So I took uh, this set. I try to 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 find the the less the the least singular position with this condition on the mass, and then one can prove that there is a maximal element in the class, such that the mass condition is still preserved. And then I'm saying that the maximal condition is, I'm asking phi to be exactly equal to this guy, to this maximal element. So this is why I say that this condition, I call this condition maximal. Because it's the maximal element in that class. Yes, this is like, uh, I guess this is a very hard job to, for me to try to, to explain this condition. Each time I change, uh, but anyway. Uh, so this was one, I don't know, I can do here. Uh, uh. Wait, what I'm doing, okay. And this should be this, okay. Okay. So why did I define this, uh, this subset of TW isobarmonic function, this M? Well, because as I said, now I'm gonna pick my prescribed singularities here inside this set. Hmm? So this is why I, I did all this effort. So now ready to, we are ready to, to state the theorem. Theorem. Hmm? That says, so we fix, assume, We have a density, a non-negative density in, so now we, we don't need smooth, but we just need the integrable for some P, with P strictly positive, and such that when I look at the integral over X of F omega N, this, is, this has to be a strictly positive uh, number, so the total mass is strictly positive, then, for any potential in this subset M, so this maximal potential, having such that, so with also small unbounded locus, this is a technical condition, let me just write it down and I will explain later, unbounded locus, hmm? such that the integral over x of the total mass of this guy is equal to the integral over x of f omega n. Hmm? So for all such a guy with, such a co with, with this condition, there exists, so two points, there exists a unique u theta blue subharmonic function normalized again with sup equal to, um, to zero, solving uh, the following complex motion per equation, namely theta u to the power n equal to f omega n, and moreover, u has the same singularity type of phi, namely when I look at the difference, the, the norm, the, the absolute values of the difference is bounded by, const, by a constant, positive constant. And second point, there exists a unique V, again, a theta pluri subharmonic function, so maybe I should die for any negative lambda, there exists a theta pluri subharmonic function solving 
theta v to the power n equal to exponential of minus lambda v f omega n and again v my solution is going to have the same singularity type of the potential that I, I prescribed at the beginning. Okay, so this is the statement of the main theorem. Let's, let's look at this. Okay, so first of all, you can see that, so this corresponds to, in a naive way to the case lambda equal to zero in the first motion pair equation that I, I wrote for you, and this corresponds to the case lambda negative. And what I'm telling here is that, again, if I fix a model potential, if I fix a singularity that I want to see, that cannot be so bad, so it has to be inside this, uh, it has to be maximal, it has to satisfy this technical assumption plus this mass condition, and this is again the analog of the compatibility condition that I wrote also in the, um, for the, the smooth case, then I can solve my motion per equation in which way? I can solve them in a very special way because I can also, not only I can solve, I can ensure the existence and uniqueness of a solution, but I can ensure that the solution in both cases is going to have the same singularity type of the potential I chose at the beginning, this phi. So having the same singularity type, it means exactly um, be the difference being bounded. Hmm? Okay. So as a corollary of that, maybe there, well, I don't have to fight with the blackboard. Okay. As a corollary of that, in particular of corollary of part two in the theorem, we can prove that if x uh, is with uh, ample canonical bundle, I example, that correspond to the first chain class being uh, negative, then uh, given, let's say, given uh, a, a smooth metric, given any smooth metric, uh, H on the canonical bundle on <coughs> such that is curvature, so as such that the curvature of H and I'm gonna denote by theta is 3 really positive, hmm? <laughs> then given blah, 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 there exists a unique, uh, then given any smooth uh, and phi, as in the theorem, as in the theorem, there exists a unique singular Keller Einstein metric that I'm going to write of the type H times exponential or minus phi Ke, to be that this is the, the, the Keller Einstein potential on the canonical bundle in such a way, in such a way that such that and phi Ke is theta blue is subharmonic and it has, again, the same singularity type of the potential that I chose at the beginning. Hmm? So th this gives existence or uniqueness of singular keller einstein um, constant matrix with prescribed singularities. Hmm? Where again, prescribed for me means I choose the potential at the beginning, not so singular, and then I solve my complex motion per equation in within this singularity type class. Hmm? Okay, let me make some remark of the theorem. So I'm gonna 
ask this to be here. So this is one. Uh, and the ah, and this to be here. Okay. So here. Okay, remarks for the theorem. Remarks. Here. The first remark is that the technical condition that since my time is running, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna define. So this condition, small lambda d locus, we we think, I mean it's technical, and we hope that maybe we can remove it. So it's technical, but for the moment we are not able to do that. While the condition of phi being uh, an element in M is necessary. Hmm? I mean, if this is, this is not the case, we cannot solve our complex motion power equation. Hmm? So this means necessary. And the third, the third remark is that, so at some point at the beginning when I start talking about all this stuff, I said, okay, maybe you, you um, for convenience, you can think at this state and your mind being a state color, another color form. But actually, all uh, uh, what I said works for in a more general setting, so everything works For uh, for theta being a representative of a big homology class, such that the homology class of theta is big. So what what does it mean being big? So now you have all the information to um, uh, to get this. So it means. A class is big is if and only if there exists a potential, a theta PSH function, hmm? theta PSH function, such that its mass, so this guy, is strictly positive. Hmm? And you see that this is like the minimal condition that we have to ensure because uh, our M there. In our M there, the, we wanted the mass to be positive somehow. Hmm? Not necessarily up to the volume, but positive. Okay, these are uh, the, the three remarks. Uh, do I have, how many minutes do I have? Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, so maybe I would just to, I, I would love to finish saying that actually the strategy of the, the theorem, the, the main theorem there, so since I already said the word, the strategy is actually developing and adapting the variational approach, <coughs> the variational approach due to uh, Berman Buxom SD Gaussian in 2013. And to do that, we need again to, to develop some new, new, um, uh, new result in, uh, in pluripotential theory in order to, in, in particular, the, the domination principle for those of you who know who knows that. Okay, so thanks a lot for your attention.